Are you a quad pilot looking to get wet and wild with your flight style? Do you want to fly your drone into puddles and maybe back out again? Do you not want to blow up your electronics? Well, you might want to put this goop on your goop. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and today we'll be talking about waterproofing drones. Why are we talking about waterproofing drones? Well, for everywhere except for where I live, where winter never happens, it is sorta kinda winter time. At least if you're in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's all about the summertime for you. But in the winter time, more so than ever, we typically look at waterproofing quads. Cause you fly in things like snow, more rain happens, all kinds of other stuff, puddles accumulate, your drone could meet its demise in one of those puddles. So what do we do to protect our quads from this wetness? Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to talk about specifically conformal coating. Now, my preferred conformal coating is this MG Chemicals 422C. This is a silicone-based, really nondescript, thin liquid that you just brush on. It dries within 15 minutes and cures within 24 hours, and it's my favorite for a lot of reasons, but... Honestly, water is not that conductive, so why are we so worried about it? Water itself is a terrific insulator. It's the crap that's in water that's the problem. The salts, like salt and potassium, and especially if we're talking about seawater, the salt in seawater. But you might be thinking, well, I fly in fresh water, or rain, or all the lakes and ponds I have, they're not salt water. It's not a big deal. That's somewhat true. Rain is really as close to fresh water as we can get, being that we live on a planet full of dirt and other things. But even in the air, that stuff gets in there. And pond water? <laughs> well, there's a lot of crap in there, and uh, it might literally be crap. You never know. So another thing Conformal Coat stands to do is protect your crap from all of the crap in the water after it has evaporated. It leaves its deposits and other crappy silty things on your components, just like it does when you cut up grass and fling it on your flight controller and all those other things. It can build up and cause problems over time. Sometimes there's slight acids in the water or sometimes certain chemicals will respond to the copper or other traces on the board and eventually eat them and etch them. You will usually destroy the quad before that ever happens, but that's why Conformal coating, especially a silicone conformal coating, is a really good idea. Now, silicone is fairly inert when it comes to elemental reactions, and it is also very durable compared to the other options on the market. If you go searching the interwebs, you're going to find conformal coatings made of silicone, and then you're going to find some made of acrylic, which are basically fingernail polish, because yes, you can rub fingernail polish on your board, just like I'm gonna talk about with this stuff, and it will do the job, but it will eventually flake off. And then you're gonna find other things like FPV worry-free, which are more goopy. This is a very thin liquid. Those are more of a gel, although they work in the same way and they are silicone-based too. If that's your preference, have a good day, go do that. It comes with everything you need, and you can still use the same techniques to get it on there for the most part that I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But I prefer this thinner stuff because I don't like a large buildup of silicone all over my boards. When I go to solder on it, this stuff burns off real easy and I don't have to pre-clean it with alcohol or anything else to get my soldering work done. Now, speaking of soldering, you want to make sure that your quad is completely assembled and soldered before you apply this because every time you solder on it, you are going to be burning off the conformal coat and it will no longer be effective. So make sure all your solder joints are made before you start this process and then essentially tear the quad back down and conformal coat it. Now, let's talk about how we actually get the work done. And the first step is cleaning all of the components. I like to use QD electronic cleaner. It's a quick drying aerosol cleaner that you could just spray in there and kick all the dirt and crap out of it. it's a pre-built quad or an already built quad, or just get all the grime from soldering off whenever you just built it before you put your conformal coat on. Anything that is on the board before the conformal goes on will be permanently on the board under the conformal. So you wanna make sure it's good and clean. Now, if you don't have QD or you just don't wanna use QD, you can absolutely use just some isopropyl alcohol, get a higher alcohol content isopropyl alcohol and just brush it down with a soft brush and that'll basically do the same trick. And now that you've got it clean, there's some components you definitely wanna avoid with this stuff because anything you put conformal coat on is not gonna make electrical contact anymore. And some parts of our flight controllers need electrical contact or open air contact to be able to function. So let's take a look at what those are. And we're gonna start with plugs. Like on this flight controller, it has a couple of plugs on here. If you get silicone in there, the pins in the plug are gonna be ineffective. They're just not gonna make contact anymore. So the best way to conformal around plugs is to plug the plugs in. 
conformal coat with the plug plugged in. Even if you don't have anything actually attached to the other end, go dig up the box or whatever came with your quad and plug the extra plugs in. That way they at least take up the space. Now, another plug on here to look for is the USB because it is the same way. If you get stuff in there, it is never going to get it out and you're going to have a really hard time connecting it to Betaflight. The two ways to handle this one though, you can either plug a USB cable in that you don't mind getting liquid crap all over, or you can go to Amazon and buy these little boots for USBs and stick them in there while you're doing the conformal coat. I prefer the little boot method because if I'm gonna go to the point of water resisting my quad, I'm probably gonna wanna leave that boot in when I'm flying anyway, because that's just an open hole for water and other crap to get into, and it's better if I cover that. So the little rubber boot is a better option long-term if that's the way you wanna go. Now a sneaky one is the barometer, which is this little shiny box here with a hole in it. And that uses air pressure. So we need to have that little hole exposed to air and allow air to traverse the hole in order to determine the air pressure at the altitude you're at. That's how the whole thing works. So you may or may not be using the barometer on your board. If you feel like coating it, and some people do, you can, but it won't work anymore. Just know the barrel will not work on your F flight controller anymore. So write that sucker right off. If you're using something like iNav or other things that require a barometer, just slap a piece of tape on that thing. Just cut a very small piece of tape, slap it over the hole before you can formal coat just to make sure the hole doesn't get any coating in it. Honestly, even if I'm not using the barrel, I will do that because down the road somewhere, I might want to turn that barrel on, and if I've destroyed it, I'm going to have a really hard time remembering that I've destroyed it with conformal coating. So just cover it up with something. A small piece of tape works great. And the next one is the boot button, because this is a mechanical button. There's actually two metal contacts in there that bend when you press it. And if you get conformal coat into it, Again, you aren't gonna make any electrical contact. That button is not gonna work. It's best to just try to avoid this area. There's not really anything you could do to cover it up. And some boards have different buttons than this one. This SpeedyB board has a more chonky mechanical button, but some have small little depressible pieces of metal that act as the boot button with little captain tape covers. And still, you wanna just avoid that area altogether because if you get stuff in there and it dries, it's gone and you can't use your boot button anymore, which really sucks if you ever get your flight controller into a situation where you need to manually put it into DFU mode to flash it because something went wrong. If you don't have a boot button, you're going to wind up having to rip that boot button off and do it with tweezers or something and it's going to be a gigantic pain. So just avoid that area. And the last flight controller one is the SD card slot. Now, not every flight controller is going to have an SD card slot, but this one again does. And I'm doing this video with it specifically because it has all of these things. But you want to avoid that area entirely too. Even if you put an SD card in there, the stuff is thin so it can flow in and find its way onto the pins. And it may leave enough contact for an SD card to work, but you just want to avoid the entire area instead. It is a much easier solution. Now you're probably asking, if I'm avoiding all of these areas on the flight controller, then what the hell, man? It's not really waterproof. Well, you're right. Nothing's really waterproof about this whole situation. Plugs, buttons, barometers, all the stuff you have to leave open for function will absolutely be susceptible to water. So you want to look out for that. Nothing is truly waterproof, even if you see people dunk them in liver, liver livers. Don't dunk anything in your liver. I mean rivers or lakes. It happens. The truly waterproof stuff is actually filled with adhesive. It's totally adhesive filled and all the plugs and solder joints are under it. So you can't actually change any of it out. And that's how they achieve full waterproofing. None of the stuff you can do with the stacks you buy in a box are going to be truly waterproof, but you're getting awfully close by using conformal coating and making sure you don't nix up all those components that we said to leave it off of. Now the ESC doesn't have much to worry about except for the main plug itself. You of course wanna leave that one in a state where it's not gonna get conformal coat in. So plug your little harness in before you get there. And a lot of them have these metal tops, which makes conformal coating really difficult. Um, if you're really brave, you can pop that off of there. Honestly, I've not found a reason to do that. What I will do instead is go around the edge with a brush and let some get up under it because that's where the water would ingress anyway. And that's most of where the problem is. Obviously, the bottom of this one is totally open, so it's fair game for getting all up in. But when it comes to heat sinks and things like that, it can be a little bit of a call. 
it's up to you, but I just go around the edges and make sure to get all of the FETs because a lot of amperage goes through the FETs and of course all of your main pads get it pretty thoroughly. Now moving on to cameras, this is a little bit more controversial. Some people don't do anything to their cameras when it comes to conformal coating. You can though, it's up to you. It depends on your use case for conformal. If you are just gonna protect yourself from getting dunked in a lake or a river or the ocean, then doing that might make sense. And you can totally pop the back off of these cameras and conformal coat all the things in there, except for the connectors. You cannot, you cannot conformal the connectors, whether that be a MIPI connector, if you're using a digital camera, or even the old school analog one. Again, make sure you have the connector plugged in so that you don't get it all nasty. Now, if you pull the entire board out though, on the other side is the CCD or the actual sensor. You wanna stay far away from the sensor with conformal coating. Absolutely stay away from it. If you get some of that on there, you are gonna get some really weird images in your feed and you're not gonna like it. So stay well away from that when it comes to your cameras. And like I said, it can be done with digital or analog. Now, the last bit is VTXs. And that's gonna really depend on what kind of VTX you are running because digital VTXs tend to have heat sinks and a lot of analog ones do too. Personally, I don't ever conformal coat my VTXs. They're just so buried in aluminum a lot of times, it's really difficult. Now you can, if you would like, pop the top off of your VTX and get all up in those heat sinks and alcohol off all of the goopity goop that's in there for heat transfer and then conformal coat it, put the goop back and put it back together. But that is a very involved process. And personally, I just don't find it worth it. I look at this whole thing as a way to resist water. If I dunk it into a river or a lake or a pond, I'm probably going to have a problem anyway if I was going to have a problem. Whether you can formal code it or not, you have a higher likelihood of getting your quad back in working order, but it's not guaranteed. And it's a really good chance that the VTX is going to get water in it. So it's up to you if you want to dig in that far. I personally don't find that useful, but you might. So now that we know about everything we should and shouldn't coat, let's talk about how we coat it. With this stuff, it is really simple. All you need is a brush and the stuff. Yep, that's basically it. You just want to brush a thin layer of this onto all the components that we talked about in the way we talked about it so that you don't hit anything that you might accidentally not want to hit. And then you want to wait about 15 minutes for it to totally dry. Now, with the 422C specifically, this stuff fluoresces in UV light. So if you happen to have a UV light, you can point it at your freshly coated thing and make sure you've not missed any spots. There's also another version of the 422 by MG Chemicals that is not UV fluorescent. And it's a little harder to tell because this stuff dries absolutely clear and thin. If you're using FPV worry-free, it's a little bit easier because it's so thick and easy to see. So you might not need to fluoresce anything. And I don't believe that fluoresces anyway. Just make sure you've got a nice thin even coat on everything and give it about 15 minutes to dry. Now to totally cure, it will take up to 24 hours. And you are absolutely welcome to go back and add a second layer, but I would highly recommend that you don't just pile it on forever. You don't wanna stack up a ton of this crap on your board, because every time you go to solder on it, you're gonna to have to burn through these layers with a soldering iron, and it's gonna let you burn through it, but it's gonna get goopy and gross, and over time, it's gonna get nasty. So try to use thin layers, and whenever you solder on the board, always go back and reconformal the joint you soldered, make sure to use a thin layer there too so you don't wind up piling this crap up everywhere. So now that you've conformaled your quad, let's talk about the things you can't avoid, which is the water. Because if you're conformaling it, you're probably doing it for a reason or you just want the insurance policy that comes with it. But when it comes to water in your quad, it's gonna happen. Even if you have conformal coating, if you crash in water, the first thing you should do is unplug the pack. If there's any way for you to unplug the pack while you're underwater, it will be better. Because water in general is a large quantity of water all around your quad. Voltage carried by it is going to be more dispersed through that larger body of water. As you yank the quad out of the water though, smaller droplets are going to form and that is where you might have a problem between two specific pins on the flight controller's processor or anywhere else, maybe in your VTX or in those plugs that you weren't able to conformal coat. So you wanna make sure you unplug the pack underwater and disconnect it while it still has the most potential for dissipating all of that current into a larger body of water. If you can't though, as soon as you pull it out, yank the pack. 
as quick as you can. And don't plug it back in immediately. You want to make sure to dry it off. Now, everybody says you should throw it in a bag of rice because that's what people do with their phones. Well, that doesn't work very well. <laughs> Honestly, the bag of rice method is super slow. Rice doesn't absorb water as quickly as you would imagine. Even if we're talking about something that's not rice, like desiccant that comes in a lot of products, these little packs that say don't eat on them, which you should not eat. Don't eat them. They don't taste good and they could kill you. They don't do a great job either. It's super duper slow. Honestly, the best way to dry your quad off, and like I said, you must dry it off before you go fly it again, even if it's conformal coated, is to set it on top of a high powered fan or as high a power fan as you can find. Sit it right in front of a high powered fan, flip it at an angle where air will blow through it and put as much air over it as you can. The natural dissipation of that air over the water and the evaporation it causes will be the fastest and most effective way to dry off your quad. Now, some people will spray isopropyl alcohol or even more of this QD cleaner on a wet quad to get rid of some of the water, which you totally can do. However, if you're using an acrylic or silicone-based conformal coating, alcohol will actually rub this stuff off. So if you squirt it down with alcohol or clean it with alcohol after you've conformal coated, you might be rubbing off your conformal coat. And then you want to bust that UV lamp out and hope you've bought the UV fluorescent version so you can see where you've rubbed it off and reapply it. Just be careful with what you clean it with. Now, what you absolutely can clean it with is distilled water. I'm not talking about tap water or reverse osmosis water out of the local water fountain. I'm talking about a gallon of distilled water you can buy at the store. And that stuff has all of the minerals distilled out of it. It is the purest form of water you're going to be able to find. It is the least electrically conductive. And if you wash enough over it, over the quad, it will dissolve all the crap that's in the other water into that water. Just hold it over a bucket, pour a bunch on there, and let it all wash out. Do not plug it in, though. Again, set it in front of a fan and let it dry. It may take a day, two days, three days. Give it as much time as you can possibly give it to get the most chance. But if you have conformal coated it, there's a really good chance that it's going to live through it. And some people find that they fly their quads into water and pop it out and sling some of the water out, put the pack on and go, and it never has a problem. And that's totally possible. It's not every time you hit water that you will blow up a component. But if you can formal code it, there's a lot less chance of it happening. It's just a small insurance policy, and this stuff isn't terribly expensive or hard to use. So let me know in the comments below if you are a conformal coder. I actually put a, a poll on the, the community tab of YouTube a little while back, and a whole bunch of people use conformal coding, more than I thought they would. Out of all of my fleet, I only have like four or five, because I just kill a quad well before I ever get a chance to put it into water, so that happens to be where I live, though. You might live in a much more wet area. So let me know. Are you flying in the rain? you flying in the ocean? What are you flying in? Hopefully you're not, you know, flying in Antarctica full of snow or something like that, but it'd be really cool if you were, so you should tell me. Maybe you live in Canada where it snows a lot. It's a really good use case for conformal coating. And let me know if you plan on using the MG chemicals or you're going to go with FPV worry-free. It's kind of a mixed bag. A lot of people like the worry-free. I just happen to prefer this. It seems easier to apply and does a great job. So leave me a comment below, and uh, until next time, Keep your quads out of the water, stay greasy, and I'll catch you later. Now this is the part where the patrons scroll over my face and I say more stupid stuff while the camera's still on. Uh, yeah, so for this video, I thought about totally dunking a flight controller in water. Uh, I couldn't get one to die. Yeah, it, it's actually a lot harder than you'd think. I even mixed a lot of salt into the water and dunked it in. I could not get anything that wasn't just the flight controller continuing to work. Yeah, that's why I don't conformal coat a bunch of my quads, but the ones that I know I'm going to fly in, like, snow and other crap, because it does occasionally snow in my part of Texas, I conformal coat, just in case. But maybe I'm just super lucky. I'm sure one of these people have killed a quad in water before. I can probably name one of them. Anyway, thanks, patrons, for paying for everything I do, keeping the lights on, buying this MG Chemicals conformal coating, and allowing me to destroy a flight controller for science, even though I couldn't actually get it to die. I really wish it had, though.